From the PCTV studios, the Monday Morning Quarterback. And welcome to yet another edition of the Vlahost Host Unsurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. I'm Dave Ridenour, the Monday Morning Quarterback, and tonight we are live at the Friendship Hook and Ladder Fire Company in Boyertown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> we got a packed house over here. We got a great show planned. We got our soup cook off. We have giveaways. We have special guests. We got all kinds of things happening over here at the Hooks, as it is affectionately known here in Boyertown. We're going to take a quick time out. When we come back, I'm going to introduce you to my first guest. We're going to get the soup cook-off going, and we're going to have lots of fun right here at the Hooks in Boyertown, PA. Tune for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. Yeah! At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Flahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Hey, we're back here live at the Friendship Hook and Ladder Fire Company in Boyertown, PA, where we're going to have an opportunity to talk to Boyertown's football coach, first-year coach, just finished his first year, and a successful one at that, T.J. Miller. T.J., welcome to the Hooks, and welcome to the uh, Monday Morning Quarterback well, Show. Thank you for having me. Well, T.J. and I got an opportunity to talk a little earlier when I did my show over at the Colebrookdale Railroad Lines. He and Jerry Cap were guests on our show, and we had a great time over there. I got an opportunity to meet you. Uh, it was in the middle of the season. Things were not going as well as you had hoped, but things really to turn around, right. and he finished up real strong. Yeah, we did. You know, starting off 0-4 isn't the way that we expected the season to start, but when we uh, finally got things rolling there, you know, that first Miss Acton game, you know, that was a game where we said we're going into league play. We saw that as we were 0-0 at that point. So what we wanted to do was uh, take Seattle's new season, and our seniors really took the lead from there. Well, you know, it's amazing when you come down as your, your head coach for the first time and right. you're in the new league and trying to figure it all out. Uh, what was that transition like when you first started to come down here? You had some pretty good seniors. You had a lot of them. Yep. Uh, what was that transition like to get started at, at Boyertown? We started last February, and uh, we got into the weight room right away, and these kids were dedicated, and they said that they were going to be committed to football, and they were, and the school got co uh, committed to football, and they said that we're going to make this important, and we want to make Friday nights important, and it, I go back to this senior class and how important the senior class was and the leadership that we had in that senior class. Well, also, you have a pretty good AD and Nick we Palladino, right. who's, who's a great guy. I've known Nick for a lot of years. He's been around the area. I'm sure he was a big help as well. You got Nick, you got Dr. Cooper. You got a great administration over there that understands shaping the whole student athlete, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, swimming, whatever it is. They want to see success uh, 
in athletics, in sports, uh, in the classroom, in music. So they want to see everything. And Dr. Cooper, uh, Nick, uh, Mr. Paladino, great guys. Great well, you guys. know, also one of the things that helped you, I think, is that you're a teacher as well in right. the building. You know, and I've been a problem in a lot of the other schools in the Pioneer Athletic Conference. They have teach, uh, coaches that come out from outside. You are a history teacher Correct. in the high school. Tell us a bit about the benefits of being in the school. It's great. I have some of the kids in class, and I see those kids in class, and I'm able, you know, we have a couple minutes here and there, you know, talk football. But, you know, we're really teaching in the room, but we're in the hallway, and we're, we're getting kids in the hall and seeing our players in the hall, and they know that, you know, the expectation that we have on the field is what we expect in the classroom as well. Now, does it help you also keep an eye on those guys to make sure they're getting to class on time and doing their work and, and also staying on top with the eligibility rules as strict as they are in 2017? That also helps. Absolutely, and we have grade point average uh, goals that we set for our team, and we expect our kids to perform in the classroom. We expect them to perform on the field and in the community as well, and they know when they see me in the halls, they know get the class and I'm telling them you're, you're late you got to be moving and and they do well you know obviously you had some guys uh, I'll throw out a Jerry Cap exactly for instance certainly a, a one of the better two-way players in our area for two years right uh, he was certainly a guy that you uh, latched on to and got him to be part of your leadership uh, group tell us a little bit about the, the how valuable it was for the Jerry Caps and those guys to help you out you know, we come in at the Owen J. Roberts game at halftime, and we were tied at halftime. We were at that point a couple times before that, and I walk in, and Jerry's there, and some of the seniors are there asking everyone, how do we want this to end? And that was a game that we ended up pulling off and, and, and winning that game, and, you know, the leadership of Jerry and those other seniors, and they set the tone for those kids on, that are underneath them. The sophomores know how to play football now because of, because of those seniors. Well, let's go back to the beginning of the year. Right. Uh, you know, you set some goals, uh, individual uh, team goals, and you open up with Upper Perk. Who, uh, yep. whether you knew it or not beforehand, obviously you know now is a pretty big rivalry. They used to play on Thanksgiving Day, and, yep. and there's borderline people, you know, side by side, and, and that was a pretty good game. And you open up with that team. Yep. Were you? Were you did you realize the rivalry before you got in it? Or tell us a little bit about that first game with Upper Perk. I, you know, I knew about the Thanksgiving game, the Thanksgiving series that they had with Upper Perk, and uh, knew a little bit about the rivalry. But going into it, once I got down here, that's when I really learned more about you know, all the rivalries in the, in, in the pack. And then we get in there, and it was a really good Upper Perk team this year. Yeah, they certainly were. Tommy Hans had a bunch of seniors as well. But, you know, it, it's, it's a funny thing because you're a Berks County guy. Right. You weren't really real familiar with the, the Thanksgiving tradition. You, right. you didn't play up there uh, on Thanksgiving days. Um, so did that sort of take a little adjustment period as well? Uh, yeah, you know, it was a tradition that I wish they would have still had. We would love to uh, play on Thanksgiving. And like I tell our guys now, the only way we're going to play on Thanksgiving is, the playoffs. is a district championship. Exactly. So that's what we, uh, that's what, you know, every team should aspire to be. Yeah. we well, got a lot of good Boyertown people in the crowd yeah, tonight, TJ. And, there's a lot of good Boyer, Boyertown people everywhere. Yeah, and they, uh, and they, I'm sure they missed the, the Boyertown Upper Perk Thanksgiving Day game too. <laughs> a lot of them never missed the Thanksgiving Day game. And, and we talked about that from, from time to time. Now, you played a pretty tough non-league schedule. Right. Uh, I'm sure, was that set up before you were hired as a coach? It was, yes. Okay, so you didn't really have a lot of input in that. Correct. Um, you know, you played Upper Perk, you played um, uh, Potts Grove, you played Academy Park, you played Exeter, one yep. of your Berks County foes. So yep. uh, what did you think about your non-league schedule? I knew going into it how good Potts Grove was and, and what Coach Penny Packer had set up there. Um, and Exeter. So those four teams were all playoff teams. So we went into that and we knew it was going to be a gauntlet, but we wanted to, you know, we don't back down from challenges and we wanted to see how good we were going to be um, against those playoff teams. And, you know, towards the end, you know, down seven to uh, uh, Potsgrove at halftime, able to, you know, do a little, uh, you know, until we ran out of gas, you know, get some success against them. And then by the end of it, you know, kids really started, you know, seeing our offense. We got things clicking. So, uh, we're okay with a hard non-league schedule. Yeah, absolutely. And again, as a 6A school, you know, you're, you're looking for points and playoffs. Right. For, but let's take a, a one-second break here. The girls are coming around now. We, we have uh, Jen, we have Stacy, uh, we have Ann, we have Barb coming around with soup number one. If you got your uh, judge sheet, make sure you know there, there's a first place and a second place. The reason we have the second place is because it could be a tie. So who, if there's a tie for first, we'll go to the second place. Whoever has the most second place votes, votes out of those two ties will win tonight's contest. So the girls are coming around with the, uh, with the soups right now. So make sure you enjoy them and think about them as well. All right? So the girls are working with soup number one. 
We'll get us some soups then, too. Right? That's fantastic. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's amazing how these things happen. I mean, uh, obviously, you're a coach. You, right. you know, you, you want to be a coach. You aspire to be a coach. Yep. Uh, uh, it's in your blood. Uh, tell us a little bit about why you love being a coach so much, TJ. Yeah, I knew when I was in high school that I wanted to be uh, a high school football coach. And I'm, my high school football coach is Mick Vecchio from Governor Mifflin. And uh, I can't say enough about him. Just saw him yesterday. Um, talked to him almost every week. Um, and he helped shape me and he helped shape other people and that's why I got into it because I get a chance to do what I love, I get to stay in football and I get to help shape young men. You know, it, it's a win-win. Uh, Vic Vecchio, sort of a penny packer, a Henry yep. Bernard, a Jim Mick, all those legendary guys have been around for a long time. And, and you know, it, it's sort of a, a different scenario in today's world. You don't see coaches hanging around as long as Rick Pennypacker, 29 years. Right. Uh, not to put you on the spot, but do you see yourself hanging in this game for, for a while? I love this game. I'm going to be a part of this game as long as I'm able to be a part of this game. And uh, I'm, I'm blessed to have a family that's supportive of what I do. Uh, my son was a ball boy this year, and he's you know he's into it. So yeah, I'm gonna be here as as long as I'm able to be here, and you know I don't see myself going away anytime soon. Well, that's a good thing. As I talked to Rick Pennypacker last week, and one of the things he really attributed a lot of his success and longevity was his wife Ann. Yeah. You know, <laughs> your wives do a lot of stuff. You know, yeah. with the children, things that you miss out on, and and she was very supportive, and and she helped things go along. Obviously. Uh, Mrs. Miller is, is the same way. Uh, yeah, you know, like I said, I got a great support staff at home, and I can't say enough uh, about my family at home and you know everything that they do for me and the and all the ways that they support me. So you have one boy. Do you have a how, what do you have a boy and a girl? Or? Yeah, I got a I got a seven year old boy, okay. and then I got a five year old girl. She's okay. just turned five. Okay. Uh, I think she'll be seventeen next year, though. She kind of exactly. rules the house there a little bit. <laughs> after, so you do have a, maybe a for, a future football player as the ball boy gets around. And uh, if if that's what he wants to do, then yeah. Yeah, because I always say those coaches' kids are always pretty good because they're always listening they're always things. yep it's always good well you know you talk a little bit about you know, your we talk a little about your knowledge schedule let's talk about your first win yeah your first win we came against Methacton was the first game of the Liberty Division which uh, those people out there the, the Pioneer Athletic Conference is broken into two divisions the Liberty Division which is the large schools and the Frontier Division which are the smaller schools right so you have six teams in your <coughs> excuse me in your division you're gonna play them all one time yep and you open up with Methacton tell us a little bit about that game and your first big win. Like I said, going to that game, we saw that as a 0 0. We're, it's a new season for us, and we don't take any team lightly. And you know, we knew that both teams going in were winless. They, everything that we had riding on that game, they had riding on that game as well. Who was going to come out of there with the first win? And we also knew that that game could make or break our season. If we, win, if we lose, lose that one, then it could be you know, a messy year. Uh, we go in there, our kids had confidence, and we were able to you know, have some success and success early, get on top and stay on top. Well, you know, one of the things that I liked about that is I know with your offense, you like to spread the ball around. You're yeah. not going to have one guy, as much as you love over Rasul Faison, yeah. uh, you don't have a guy like that, so you're going to spread the ball around. Six different guys scored touchdowns in yep. your first win against Methacton. That's got to keep everybody happy as well. It did, and everyone knows on our offense, and our triple option offense, that quarterback could have a big night, fullback could have a big night, slots could have a big night. Now you throw Kevin O'Connor and Jerry Cap out on the outside. You know, now you're looking at more. You know, you can't just load the box up, and I think that's having those guys on the outside really helped our running game this year. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, listen, the number one soup is going around. While we're doing that, we're going to take a quick timeout, and we're going back. We're going to talk a little bit more with uh, T.J. Miller, the first-year coach at Boyertown, now going into his second year. So enjoy the soup. We're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back with more here on the Vallejo Stun Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterbacks right after this. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243, 800-222-0243, or online at fredbeans.com. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment to countless draft beers, from great burgers to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs to the friendly Doc service, Doc Watson's is the place to be. 
So stop by Docs today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer Jr., call us or visit our website now. back here live at the Friendship Hook and Ladder, the Hooks as it's affectionately known, over here in Boyertown, PA. We're having the Blouse Dunn Shorts Monday morning quarterback and the annual cook-off. We're on soup number two, gang. So everybody make sure you get uh, your uh, spoons ready. We have soup number two coming around. We do have seven tonight, which is awesome. I appreciate that. I want to thank everybody who took the time to make some of their special homemade soups. We are on soup number two. We are also here with uh, first year coach, now going to be second year coach, T.J. Miller of the Boyertown Area High School. And, and T.J., we talked briefly about this big signature win yep. against Owen J. Roberts. Owen J. Roberts, the team that made the playoffs, 8-3 yep. and three at the end of the year. Tell us a little bit about that win. We went into that game, and we thought that we matched up well against Owen J. And looking at them on film and looking at us on film, we said we got a shot to win this game. And we knew if we were going to win that game, it was going to be exactly how it was. It was going to come down to the very end. And, uh, you know, at the end, our kids gutted it out. And we decided that we were going to go down the field and use their passing game in the two-minute drill and get in range for Declan, uh, and then being able to stop them. They got the ball back with uh, about 20 seconds left uh, or so and were able to stop them, and that was, that was huge. Well, I was going to say, there's two words that I come to think about when I hear this game is Declan Coyle. <laughs> I mean, I think it's awesome. It, yep. You know, there's a little sophomore, I, I believe he's a sophomore, yep. junior, underclassman, and he said, last year I'm sitting in the stands watching these guys play. Yep. Now this year they're carrying me off on their shoulders. That had to be awesome for that young man. Uh, that was incredible. And Declan joined our team in the summer last year, and Declan decided that he wanted to play football and he wanted uh, to kick for us as well. So we worked with Coach Dead Young of the soccer team, and we worked out a schedule where he, he was able to come to both practices, uh, and he did and he did a great job and he was dedicated to both and really a special kid uh, Declan is. That's awesome and, and you love those feel good stories and there's a guy who comes out and ends up kicking the game winning field goal as you mentioned you know with Dawson Stewart back there you, you yeah. never felt comfortable until yep. you heard that final whistle but what a big win for, for Boyertown and a signature win in your first year. You lose to Spring Ford the next week yep. which was I'm sure a little bit of a downer but let's talk about the last three games. Yes. You end the year up with three uh, victories in a row and end up five and six after starting 0 and 4. Yep. Tell us a little bit about those last three games. Uh, we went into Norristown knowing that Norristown was a very good football team. They, their record was not indicative of how good they really were. And we told the kids going into that game that this, this is going to be a dogfight. Um, and you know we might have had a little bit of confidence because we thought we might have played better than what people would have expected against Perk Valley in the first half, and then you know Springford in the first half. And uh, but we got knocked down, you know, to where we needed to be to build our program up, and we were able to hang on there and a wild ride at the end. And again, Aiden Mathias throwing a 55-yard pass to Jerry Cap, who was you know Jerry on the spot again. Yeah, well, that's awesome. And the thing is, now you have the crossover game. Yep. Uh, which, are, are you a fan of the crossover game? Uh, do you like that situation? I like it. You know, in our situation, it, we weren't competing for a playoff spot. So in our situation, you know, it's a good rivalry game. Yeah. I understand some of the, uh, you know, looking at, you know, playoff points and how, you know, it could hurt a team. But for our situation, it was fine this year. And, um, you know, going against Phoenixville, another team that we don't get to see, a 5A team, um, you know, it was an exciting challenge for us. Yeah, and then, of course, we, uh, everybody here wants to hear a little <laughs> bit about your championship game because right. we're still trying to figure that out. Not too many people heard about the Eastern uh, Conference Championship. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that game, first of all. Well, being a history teacher, I'll go into the history of it. You know that before the PIAA playoffs, the Eastern Conference was the state championship. Correct. And then when, you know, PIAA state playoffs and district playoffs and that, uh, that kind of went to the wayside, but it wasn't, it never went away. So what happened with that is, you know, teams are in it, and it, you know, you can call it the NIT, you can call it a bowl game, you can call it what you will. You know, it's an extra game that we had to earn our way in, and we've got to play, a, you know, a good Pocono Mountain East team, coached by a very good 
uh, Coach Miloski up there, you know, who won state championship at Parkland. And uh, we were able to win, you know, a postseason game at Boyertown for the first time. And you know, we're excited about that. And we're not going to take away, you know, you know, you call it the Birmingham Bowl, the you know, Meineke Car Care Bowl. That, that was a big game for us. That uh, certainly was. And, and the host one as well, yes. which is a big thing for Boyertown. But to win that game 48-20 to 20 yep. was a big feather in your cap. And, and I saw pictures of your seniors in cap and the guys holding the big trophy. Yep. So uh, I'm sure that was a, a springboard for you for better things to come in the future. It really is. And our kids know now that Week 11 is, is a standard at Boyertown, that we won want to be playing week 11, week 12, that football doesn't end after week 10. It's not 10 and done. We want to make playoffs, and that's our goal. We're going to shape young men, and we're going to win football games. Well, you know, it's like I said, it's amazing. You start 0-4. Mm -hmm. You're trying to gain your, your momentum, get yourself together. You had some issues uh, internal staff-wise. Mm -hmm. you, you got them straightened out and finished 5-2 and two over yep. the last seven games. So that yep. certainly has to be something that you found is a good positive to look forward to to the next season. Yeah, you have 5-2 and two against very good opponents. Uh, looking at you know those teams that we beat, they, they were good teams. They were quality teams, and that's how we anticipate the season going. And now we have momentum going into the off season. We've already started for next year because that's what you got to do to, you know, to compete in the pack. Well, you know, it's it's funny here. You look at the the all league teams come out. Yep. And uh, you know, on the Liberty for the first uh, team uh, offense, Jerry Cap is a wide out, and yep. Marcus Thomas as a fullback slash a tight end position. Two guys are certainly quality kids that earn those spots. Yeah, and absolutely. I think Reese Stahl was in there too as a guard. So postseason, we, you know, in terms of all pack awards, we placed eight kids on that team, first and second team, which uh, we're, we're proud of. And we're proud of those kids for working hard. And that's a testament to what, uh, uh, to the work that they put in. Well, Jamie, Jamie Moshe, yep. okay, is coming back. He is, yeah. Right, so he's an underclassman. He got second team honors. Yep. And Carter Watts, an yep. offensive lineman, yep. underclassman, is coming back. Two guys that you're going to look to in the future? Absolutely, we are. Uh, you know, Carter's going to be a very good guard for us. And, you know, he plays defense as well. And, you know, he's a leader. And if you ask him, he probably has the best hair in the conference. Okay. He's got that long, flowing hair. Okay. Um, and then Jamie as well. Jamie, you know, we expect big things for him. And we expect him to move into a fullback position and really be the centerpiece of our offense moving forward. And again, you get your quarterback back. Yep. Uh, Aiden Mathias is coming back as a, a guy now that has one year under his belt. Yep. Uh, do you expect some pretty big things for him next year? I really do. And one of the things about Aiden that we love is Aiden's becoming a student of the game. Aiden's coming and talking to me. You know, in class, I have him in class, so he'll, he'll talk to me from time to time about you know different things that you know he might see on film, and you know he's ready to go for next year. Well, you know, it's funny because I, I during the season I have you know I had Brandon Schimpf, I had yeah, yeah. Faison, I have all these guys that that come in and. and and uh, per Gene, the quarterback at Spring Ford and Petterland. These guys have become such students of the game as yep. far as film study. I said, I go back to my days where we had the old 16 millimeter, 8 millimeter. <laughs> we couldn't even tell who was who, right, what right. side was what, you know? And these guys are, are breaking down film. Tell us a little bit about that, how the game has evolved to these high school kids. Yeah, you know, we're trying to teach our kids football as well. So we, we look at these kids and they have Huddle, uh, the app you know, to which they watch film, and they have it on the phone so they can sit there on the bus on the way to a game trying to pick stuff up. We expect them to watch film every week and we can see how much time each player is watching. And so we sit down and break down film with them and then they're watching on their own as well. So they have more access to it than, than ever before. Wow. Well, we do have some giveaways. To get, uh, do we have our tickets out there, girls? Can we, how about if we give away a Boyer Town uh, uh, t-shirt right now? In honor of Coach uh, Miller here, he brought some Boyertown T-shirts. Uh, can we pick out a number and uh, give a, have our first giveaway? Let's get that squared away. I know the girls are in the back dishing out um, uh, soup and things, but we're going to try to see if we can give away a shirt. All right, we're on number three. Okay, we're on number three. That's good. They're going to keep flowing as we're up here uh, having some fun our, ourselves, TJ. But we'll get a, we'll get a T-shirt there as soon as the girls come out. We'll pull that out. Maybe Al, maybe Al or Todd, can you help out and get us a, get us a, a T-shirt and maybe a, a glass to give away as well here, so we can get that rolling. Have some fun. Get your red tickets out a while. We have Sherry out there having. Okay. <coughs> Give it to Coach here. Let Coach draw. All right. Sherry's responsible for the Christmas tree in the back as well. Go ahead, Coach. All right, we got three, nine, six, nine, three, nine, nine. That's for a Boyertown T-shirt. Go ahead, Coach. Read it again. Three, nine, six, nine, three, nine, nine. We got a winner? 
Oh, oh my God. We, we got your security guy. Not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a small for him. We got a small that he can work out. <laughs> Let's go with one more, too, Todd. Can we pick one more? We'll give away uh, 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 one of the glasses. What is that, an Eagle's glass? Yeah, Bud Light Eagle's glass. Get your tickets out there. Sherry, where'd Sherry go? We'll pick another one out when she gets back. But while we're waiting, waiting for Sherry, uh, uh, Coach, uh, have you started your all-season program for 2018 yet? How, uh, how are you working that out? Yeah, we have. We, uh, we go after school, and we go four days a week after school, and we have our program set, and we've been having decent numbers come out, and you know, a lot of interest in football right now. Kids are excited about football. Well, you right know, I, as I said, I talked, to, I talked to Nick Palladino, and he said, man, I got guys in the hallway asking me, hey, yep. where's the weight room? How can I lift weights and do all this stuff, which has got to be awesome. Oh, it is. It's fantastic. And, you know, that's a testament, again, to the seniors and the team that we had this year that set that, that building, you know, that, that level there, and where uh, they know that football is important now. And, and, you know, kids get excited about football now at Boyertown. Okay. Here we go, Sherry. Go ahead, Coach. All right. Three. And on? Yep. Three, nine, six, nine, three, seven, one. Three, nine, six, nine, three, seven, one. That's for a that's for a Budweiser Eagles glass. Anybody want to come up and claim that one? Keep your tickets because we're going to throw all the tickets back in the bucket to get an opportunity to win uh, the Neil Walkowitz jersey. So make sure you check out and do not get rid of your tickets. So you have your schedule set for next year. We do, yes. Okay, you have some young guys that you're willing to, uh, you're going to take care of. Tell us a little bit about your philosophy. What, what did you learn that first year that you're going to change next year? You're going to tweak a little bit. Tell us how that all works out. Uh, yeah, we're looking at things that we can do in the offseason in terms of maybe get kids away from Boyertown for a little bit. You know, looking, we have a, you know, one camp set up right now and be able to you know, really make it intensive uh, at different times throughout the summer. Um, you know, we're looking at different times that we can go. We, we you know, have one new opponent in Burks Catholic, and you know, we, want, we want to be the best, so we're going to play the best, and we'll see where we stand against you know, a, a state semifinalist. Wow. Well, that's awesome, and uh, I want to thank you for stopping by. And, again, congratulate you on, on a great season, particularly the second half of the season, where you finished up a 5-6, and 5-2 and two over the last seven uh, games, the big uh, conference championship. Yep. And uh, I want to thank you for stopping by and wish Thanks you for having and your me. family a great Christmas. And, and you. Good happy to thank you very much. All right. Thank hey, you. how about Coach T.J. Miller, gang? <laughs> He also told me he wanted to wear a sport coat and tie so he could show up Coach Pennypacker and all the guys yeah. in the Pioneer <laughs> Athletic Conference, which he certainly did as well. All right, we're going to take a quick time out. We're going to get some more soups. We're going to get some uh, more uh, giveaways. We're going to have a lot of fun. We got our special guest number two waiting in the wings. We're going to get him mic'd up. We'll have some fun right here at the Hooks in Boyertown, PA, on the Vallejo Sun Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. 
They're open six days a week. Fred Bean's Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243. 800-222-0243 or online at fredbeans.com. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr. Call us or visit our website now. At Vlahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. Back here live at the Hooks in Boyertown, PA. We're having a lot of fun. We got the soups flying. Uh, we got some uh, giveaways going. Uh, before we go any further, I want to take a minute to, to thank some of the people who helped to make this night possible. Uh, we have WB Car Construction. I want to thank Billy and Senior and Junior and Senior. I want to thank them. Crable Paving and Excavating. I want to thank the Crable Boys for helping us out a little bit. A to Z Furniture. We got my man Eric in the back here helping us out. And also, Webby O'Dell and Reliable Paper Products for supplying our cups and spoons and all the things there as well. Don't forget Jen, Jim Mull, Christina, Ann, uh, Stacy, and Barb, all the girls that are out there, and also Sherry as well. Hey, Sherry, are we ready to do one more? Let's do a, another uh, giveaway quick. Let's do, let's do a $25 gift certificate to Mike's Brick Oven Pizza, one of my big sponsors. I tell you, if you like uh, Stromboli and pizza, Get yourself over there and get a cheesesteak stromboli. They're awesome. Do we have the tickets? Did anybody ever claim that second one? I don't think that anybody claimed that second one. That was uh, nine, uh, three, nine, six, nine, three, seven, one. Three, seven, one was that second one. That was for a glass. Okay, we got it. Okay, Billy. <laughs> no wonder he can't hear so well. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Neil. Uh -oh. There you go. Okay, we have. This is for a twenty-five hour gift certificate to Mike's Brick Oven Pizza, three nine six nine three eight zero. I guess three eight zero are the big numbers. Three eight zero for a gift certificate to Mike's Brick Oven Pizza. Three eight zero. Somebody's got to have it. 380. Is that you, Hudson? I guess not. All right. Well, anyway, we're going to move on here. We got uh, one of our major attractions, a guy that I always enjoy talking to. Uh, he's always around uh, to come on the show and, and add some insights to what's going on. Uh, number 52. Uh, a Hall of Famer in my book, that's for sure. Neil Olkowitz, formerly of the Washington Redskins. Neil Olkowitz, everybody. <laughs> Neil, what's up? Nothing much. Enjoy, <laughs> enjoying the Eagles' uh, good season. Okay, all right. Not I'm so jumping much. on the bandwagon. <laughs> okay. Not so much for the skins, though, but uh, nah. okay. No, nah, I... I knew they were going to have a tough year, and uh, it's been a little tougher than I thought, but uh, eh, 
There's always next year. <laughs> always next year. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, you know, it's always great to see. I see you have your your uh, 70th greatest Redskins of all time. Certainly a heck of an accomplishment to be in that group with with the Daryl Greens and, and and those kind of guys. Uh, and I know you get down there to see the guys, the alumni. A lot of times, have you been down this year at all? Yeah, we were down for the Dallas Cowboy game, as a matter of fact, which wasn't a great one for us, but. It was good to see all the guys again. They, they have alumni game every year, and this year was one of the better ones playing the Cowboys. But uh, unfortunately, the result wasn't good, but uh, maybe we uh, softened them up for the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's great when I always see those old pictures of you and the Hogs and, and all those guys. And you played with some, some great, great football players in the 80s uh, at the Redskins. Uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about some of those guys. You know, everyone always wants to know. They want to know inside and funny stories about training camps and stuff. But... Tell us a little, give us a good story about the, about the Hobbs or something like that. Yeah, the, the, everybody was characters, especially the Hobbs. They, they would drive Bugle nuts. He was our uh, offensive line coach and was always strict. And uh, all of a sudden, we'd be in the meetings and we'd start hearing things hitting the, the sides of the wall. And he'd be throwing the canvas to the foot. Back then, we had canvas as a film. And he'd be throwing them against the wall and then, get out of here, get out of here. You guys are good. <laughs> and the next day, he'd be loving them. Yeah. Well, they, they certainly were a heck of a good football players, and, and Joe Gibbs obviously was a, a great, great head football coach, and, and I know you got, you got the chance to play underneath him. Tell us a little bit about Joe Gibbs. Joe was really a player's coach. You know, he, he, he kind of ruled without yelling and screaming a lot, but he was really good at picking people around him that, that would uh, inspire people that were hard workers. He had a great knack for, for knowing people that were good, that were kind of diamonds in the rough that weren't really uh, big stars yet, but he kind of knew that they had the right uh, qualities to be good. Is that a category that you fell into? Obviously, you were not drafted out of Maryland, but a great career there. You played in four bowl games. You, you led the team in, in tackles with 188 in one year. You know, I mean, you had some great credentials. I guess you sort of fell into that category as well. Yeah, definitely. We had a lot of guys like that. And, uh, you know, I didn't have the size and speed that the, the average linebacker should have. But I had instinct. I, I loved to play the game when I was tough, and uh, it worked out good. Yeah, and, and a good tackler for sure. You know, it, it's funny. I watch some of these games now, and I don't see too many linebackers <laughs> stepping in the hole and taking on guys and guards and fullbacks and runners. Uh, not like the good old days, Neil. It is amazing the, the tackling these days. Uh, you know, it's it's so much different. Uh, and the other thing is, guys laying on the field, there's like 10 guys a game know, laying on the field, and then they pop up five minutes later, and back, back in our day, you didn't land the field unless you were getting carted off. Yeah. Well, you know, it was sort of like a, a badge of honor for us not to get in that position. You know, nobody wanted to get hurt. Nobody wanted to be taken out of the game. You didn't want to miss a play. Today, they're laying in there, as you mentioned, they're rolling around like their leg's broken, and they <laughs> miss one play. I know. I think a lot of them are just taking a rest. You know, they're, they're so big, I think they need the extra breaths. Well, and maybe they're not as in shape as... as <laughs> as they should be but for those people out there who don't know Neil also went to Phoenixville he's a year older than I am and we played against each other in high school and we had a lot of good battles and and it's so sad that I look at Pottstown and you look at Phoenixville and it's just not the same as it was back in the 70s yeah it is a shame of course we both had steel mills back in them days and had a lot of people and uh, a lot of good tough people that played football and Things change, you know, as, as you go on, but uh, it'd be nice to see them both come back. Yeah, I'll say, and I know Phoenixville is going through a, a coaching change right now. They're looking for a coach, and I was sort of hoping that you might uh, put in for that position because I thought maybe you might need a towel boy or something and, <laughs> and bring me along for the ride. But uh, did you ever think about coaching at all, Neil? I, I did a little coaching with, with some younger kids, but I love playing a game. I really wasn't that big into coaching. Uh, you know, best of luck to whoever does. It, it's a tough job, and... You know, especially with the limited numbers, less and less guys coming out, and it's tough. Well, you know, that old chessmont league that we played in was a lot of fun, and there was a lot of good football players. And you know, we'd go week to week from Coachville to Henderson to Phoenixville to Springport, uh, to Great Valley to Downingtown. I mean, that was some pretty good football. Buddy. Yeah, there was no easy games. You know, it was uh, a battle every week, and uh, we loved it. You know, it was it was the way it was meant to be. You know, and one of the neat things about you, and, and uh, you're in the Hall of Fame, not only in the Tri-County, which I'm the president of, but in the State Hall of Fame as well. But when we have our events, you and your buddies are still pretty close together, and guys that you played football, and, and Tara Witts, and Tom Cohen, all those guys. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about how you've been able to stay buddies with the same guys for so long. Yeah, it's amazing. All them years uh, later, that it, you form a bond that just never really gets broken. 
and even if you don't see the guys for a couple of years, you know, you, you get back and it's like you, you never left each other. And, and, you know, everybody ages differently. They do different things. Uh, you know, some are more successful than others. But you still you come back to it. You always look back to those good old days, and, and you can always get a good laugh out of it. Yeah, you certainly can, and I'm, I enjoy those too. I'm a big guy on reunions, and I know this year Pottstown played their last uh, Thanksgiving Day game against Owen J. And certainly it was a bittersweet time for, for guys like myself. I know you enjoyed playing your Thanksgiving Day games. Uh, uh, do you have any memories about those those times, uh, Neil? Yeah, I, I really enjoyed them. Uh, I just remember Great Valley we always played against, and uh, it was. Oh, very cold. It was always very cold. I had a good game, uh, touchdown run, which my uh, the coach from Maryland was in the stands and kind of uh, helped get me to go to University of Maryland. I, I uh, peaked at the right time. <laughs> well, they had a good team, too, with Don Bryan and uh, some of those guys, a couple good running backs that I remember for Great Valley. They were a tough gang back they in those were, days. They were a very good team. And, uh, it, Tough competition all the way around. Yeah, and like I said, I look back to those days when we played Owen J. Roberts, and I won, out of the three years that I played, we won one and lost two. The two that we lost were, could have gone either way, but, you know, it, it's it's amazing when you sit there in that locker room after that Thanksgiving Day game and just realize as a senior that, oh, my gosh, your high school football days are over. Yeah, I know. It's a big shock. You know, everything goes from week to week, and then all of a sudden, there you are in your senior year, and it's all over, and it, it, it's amazing. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I put a little thing on Facebook that you were going to be on there, and, and Jay Nash, who was certainly a, a, a predominant football player at Pottstown and also played at Maryland, put Go Terps on there. Did you play at all with him? Yeah, John John was, uh, I guess, a senior when I, a freshman when I came in. He kind of showed me around as a recruit and uh, uh, kind of set the example. Him and Sachko were there from, from the area, yeah. and uh, it, it was nice having... Uh, local guys there. Larry Setter was he yeah, there Yeah, Larry's too? another Larry one. That's right. too. He went to Pius. Yep. Yeah, yep. he and Sasuke went to Pius. All right, well, listen, we're having a lot of fun here with Neil. We're going to take a quick time out. But before we do, how the soup's coming? Everybody okay with their soups? Uh, how's that going? Pretty good? All right. And the girls are going well. When we come back, we're going to have a couple of giveaways. We got a, another uh, gift certificate. We got a couple more glasses to give away right here on the Vallejo Stone Insurance Monday morning quarterback show. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Fred Beans Ford of Boyertown is located on Route 100, just two miles north of Boyertown. Fred Beans Ford provides automotive sales, service, parts, and body shop all in one place. They're open six days a week. Fred Beans Ford in Boyertown can be reached at 800-222-0243, 800-222-0243, or online at fredbeans.com. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. Welcome to the office of John H. Greismeyer, Jr., where we believe in the value of relationships. We take pride in giving you the assistance you need, 
where that involves income tax, payroll, or financial statement preparation. Located in Boyertown, we're committed to meeting the needs of the people in our community, and our team of skilled financial professionals look forward to working with you. John H. Greismeyer, Jr. Call us or visit our website now. At Vlaho Stone Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlaho Stone Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. Hey, we're back here live at the Hooks in Boyertown, PA. Is anybody out there yet? Is there anybody from the Hooks here yet? I can't hear you out there. All right, they're on soup number six. They only have one more to go, Neil, so everything is going smooth there. Sherry, we're going to have a couple of raffles here in a row. All right, we're going to start off with a, uh, a glass. Go ahead, Neil. Oh, okay. That's nice. I got to get my glasses on, Neil. <laughs> Good, because I need it too. <laughs> Excuse me. Three, seven, three. Three, seven, three. Yes, yes. All right, Bobby. Yeah, we'll go back in. Yep. All right, let's go for another one, Sherry. All right, we're going to give a we're going to have a, a uh, Mike's Brick Oven Pizza giveaway here. Three eight three, three eight three for Mike's Brick Oven Pizza. Check your tickets, everyone. 383. All right, we got a winner. All right, all right. I know, that was awesome. All right, one more, one more, one more, Neil. How about 389 for a glass? 389 for an Eagle's glass. <coughs> we have it? 389. There it is. All right, from the Mason Gang. There he is, Steve Mason. Hey, for those people out there that didn't realize this, and Neil, uh, when I was talking to Coach T.J. Miller, Jerry, Jerry Cap broke two records at Boyertown this year, and they both belong to Brandon Mason, a good football player, great all-round athlete, the, uh, the son of Mr. and Mrs. Steve Mason. And uh, I know Coach was very, very honored to meet you guys, and Brandon had a great career, and Jerry Cap with two big awards and records that he broke from Brandon Mason back in the day. So a heck of a job by Jerry Cap. That's a pretty good idea right there, you know? You still got any records out there, Neil? Uh, <laughs> uh, some that, that I know of. Right? I, I got there a couple we're not, we're not proud of, but we got some that we, yeah. we still have out there, you know? It's funny, you know, this guy has these rings. Anybody wants to take some pictures of those Super Bowl rings? He won two of them and finished second in another one. So he's got some Super Bowl rings. He also has a distinction of being one of the few people that won a Super Bowl on your birthday, Neil. Let's hear a little bit about that. Yeah, that's a good trivia question, you know. It was uh, January 30th and uh, won the Super Bowl. <laughs> there you go. 1982. 82. 1982. Against the Dolphins. Against the Dolphins. And uh, did you have a, a good game that day? Yeah, a decent game, but uh, we, we controlled it pretty well. It was a big Riggins run that day. And uh, out in uh, California, it was, it was nice. Not too many people having an opportunity to play in the Super Bowl, let alone on your birthday. I guess you were 25 that day. Yeah. 25 years uh, old. I would like to be that again. <laughs> <laughs> full head of hair and a full <laughs> beard and everything yeah, else. At that right? time, anyway. <laughs> but uh, congratulations. You know, it's funny. Uh, we talk a little bit about today's game. Uh, you know, 
you and I are old school kind of guys, and we, we, we play a, we play a certain style of football. You know, today with the, the five wides and the spread and the throw, 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 wouldn't be a whole lot of fun for us, would no, it? No, no, it's too much running for me. I like, <laughs> I like between the tackles, between the you know. Tackles. And, and it's a lot different game. But it still comes down to, you know, when they're winning, they try to run the ball, they try to, try to control the clock, and uh, it's still a big part of it, but it's much more wide open. Yeah, you know, it's amazing the way that they, they play professional football today. And, you know, there's, there's so many things that are pluses and minuses. And, you know, over the weekend, uh, obviously, almost there's something happening every weekend that sort of gives the, the NFL a black eye. Uh, tell me a little bit about how all that works. Did they, does does the, the NFL hierarchy, which would be Roger Goodell at this point, send messages down to each team to talk to them about player conduct, the doing this and doing that? Because it seems like the last few weeks, there's been a lot of black eyes to the NFL. Yeah, they do have a security team that kind of keeps track of that stuff, but they are do have their hands full, it seems like. It seems to be more and more things happening. And, and of course, with social media and everything, everything gets uh, disseminated so much quicker than it did back when we were. So uh, it, it's a problem. It, it really is a problem. And again, at the end of the Jacksonville game with, with the Seahawks, there's a big fight. One of the guys wants to go into the, into the stands because they were throwing Gatorade and beer on him and stuff. I mean, how do you handle that kind of stuff, Neil? Yeah, you just try and talk to the guys and try to keep them level-headed as you can. You, know, you got to put up with some stuff is the bottom line. If, you know, you love playing the game and you know, it's an emotional game, but you got to keep it in check to some point, you know, because you, you can't turn into a brawl. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's amazing. Was that, a, is that a cheap shot at the end of the game where, you know, everybody knows the game's over. There's 20 seconds to go. You take the victory position. You take the kneel down, and, and there's Michael Bennett trying to shoot low. I mean, is that a cheap shot? Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's an unwritten rule. And, you know, there's plenty of time during the game where you get a chance to go head on head with a guy and take your frustrations out. But at the end of the game, not the place to do it. Well, I, I felt the same way. And it's so funny because you hear all the talking heads. Everybody's got an opinion on it from ESPN to WIP to all these different people. And I'm trying to figure out, like, well, to me, that's a cheap shot. And, you, you know, you were in that situation. You know, that's, the game's over. Everybody takes the kneel down. You congratulate him. You played your heart out for four quarters, and let's move on. Yeah, that's the way it should be. But, you know, unfortunately, in today's game, not everybody thinks the same way. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it gets uh, fined or yeah, suspended or something. Some, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the guy gets kicked out of the game, and they throw some beer on him. And obviously, keep your helmet on and keep right on walking <laughs> right. as hard as it is into the locker sure. room. And just, you know, you gotta, you got to take it. You yep. know, you got to take all that's that stuff. That's the bottom line. <coughs> Excuse me, Neil. I'm sorry. Now, the Redskins, let's talk a little bit about them before we take another quick break. we got Joe C. here. We'll talk about the Eagles and Wentz and all those things then. But what are they going to do a quarterback down there? Do you have any idea? It's a good question. Uh, it sounds like Kirk, they, they haven't signed him, and uh, more and more to talk is they're going to let him go. Um, you know, Snyder's had two years to sign him and hasn't done it. And uh, more and more to talk is they're going to try somebody else. What about Gruden? Is he safe? I wouldn't think so. I, no. you know, I, I don't, can't really say. I've, I've heard a lot of stuff about him, but I wouldn't be surprised because it's been a couple years now. He really hasn't produced. And, you know, usually Snyder, Snyder is not the most patient yeah, uh, he's not. guy in the world, and he's going through a lot of coaches. Well, all right. Well, we're going to take another quick timeout. My buddy Joe C. is in the house. We're going to bring him up here as well. So it'll be Joe and, and Neil and I will get an opportunity to talk more about the Eagles, talk a little bit more about the NFL. we got some more giveaways to, to go here. So we're going to have some fun. We'll take a quick time out, get some things going. The soup is going well. We're having a lot of fun over here at the Hooks in Boyertown, PA. I'm Dave Ridenauer, the Monday morning quarterback. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Doc Watson's is one of the hottest new sports bars around. Located next to Zern's Market in Boyertown, Doc's offers something for everyone. From live entertainment, to countless draft beers, from great burgers, 
to the new outside patio, from the numerous TVs to the friendly dock service. Doc Watson's is the place to be. So stop by Doc's today for a leisurely lunch, a quick cold beer, or a great bite to eat on a nice fall night. Doc Watson's. Established in 1916 and granted membership into the Philadelphia Golf Association in 1920, Brookside Country Club is well known for its challenging layout and true fast greens. The William Gordon design provides a challenge for golfers of all abilities. Brookside Country Club offers traditional club amenities in a family-friendly atmosphere. Brookside Country Club, where elegance and excellence are par for the course. At Blahos Dunn Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life, and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Blahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Blahos of Lajos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. Back here live at the Hooks in Boyertown, PA. I'm joined with my, my good friend, the dynamic duo, Joe C. Remember, the dynamic duo is brought to you by Fred Beans of Boyertown. Get over there and see Danny Malloy. Great time to buy a new car. Also, I want to take a minute to thank my sponsors here who helped make tonight possible. We got my buddy Billy Carr, WB Carr Construction, is in the house, my good friend. He's, he's really working hard. He just got back from Aruba. Yeah, he's, don't let him kid you about all these roofs and stuff he's doing. Uh, I, my boy, da, my boy Daryl Crable and his brothers over there, Crable paving and excavating. I want to thank them. My good friend Eric down there, Eric Steller, A to Z Furniture, and the Libs, Libs Guard Team is in the house. Libs Guard Team in the house. And, of course, Webby O'Dell, Reliable Paper Products. We're hooking us all up. Are we done all seven soups now? We're all good, 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 good. Start filling out your ballots. At about 20 of, we're going to read the winner off. Uh, we're going to pick the uh, jersey winner, and we're going to have a couple more giveaways at that point. Uh, we, I would apologize. We're having some technical difficulties. It's hard to hear in here, so we'll just do the best that we can. All right, Joe, I guess we got to call it as we see it. Yeah. Our boy went down. Yeah, Our boy went down. Unfortunately, he, uh, he's got the torn ACL. You know, you saw the hit, but he's been taking a lot of hits. And uh, you know what? I, I, I got to go back and look at it. And I'm thinking that Johnson, the, the Johnson, number 22, when he, I'm not sure if it was exactly right after that or not, when he got called for the unsportsmanlike conduct on Jeffries when he was talking trash to him. Jeff, uh, Alshon Jeffrey. Yeah. And I'm wondering if, if that didn't happen. Yeah, you, know you go back, like Back to the Future, Michael J. Fox, and you look back and things change and the picture changes. I wonder if he didn't do that if, if that wouldn't have happened. Well, because I think that's that. Well, I know, that's crazy. But you know what? That set them up where they were, and he ran that play, and unfortunately, you know, that happened. But well, also, he was called, there was a, a penalty on the play, so it wasn't even. 
It was a nothing. Well, according according to Coach Peterson today, when they watched the film, they thought that he might have done it before he got hit before in the end hit. zone. He tried to elevate and dive into the end zone. He thought he might when he planted. But those MCLs, a lot of them, it's not on a hit, is it, Neil? It's on a plant most time, non-contact. Yeah, yeah, it surprised me because, yeah, mostly it's when you plant, you get hit when you're planted. Uh, but, you know, you never know. But I, I, called my, right I called my son Christopher as soon as it happened. I said, dude, he got popped. I, I mean, he uh, definitely got popped. I, you could see he was right, in pain. I yeah. Right knee. Yeah. See, yeah. I thought it would either be a shoulder or a yeah. 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 thing. Yeah. I, I wasn't was thinking right knee at all. Yeah. Then, we, then we got up, when he got up, and he went, went to call the play. You could see him kind of, I saw him rubbing his like right thigh right above his knee. I thought it was his right knee. So when they said it was his left knee, it was actually the uh, the uh, 50, I think, uh, yeah, the yeah, linebacker yeah, whatever came guy, in yeah. and the way it was hit. Or like you said, it was on the plant. Because yeah. I look at Bridgewater, guys like that, they had the ACL, they were just dropping back and playing. Well, what what do you have? What what do you have, Neil? I just said Carly. I was just lucky, cartilage. yeah. So, so uh, they can just scope that and yeah, get back. Yeah, and, they just trim it out and take it away. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I never ran ACL. fast enough to get hurt. Yeah. So I was I was lucky that way. You know, it was, it was an easy thing for me. I never, I never even twisted an ankle. You probably I mean, just saw it coming. But I have an ACL. I'm going down. Don't hit me. It's your well, strong well, leg. That's what it is. It's your, your muscle. Leg your muscle. My yeah. superior leg yeah. strength. Do you guys remember uh, uh, McNabb? McNabb got hurt, broke his uh, tibia, I think, against the Arizona Cardinals. and He, he was threw, running out of bounds or something, wasn't he? Yeah, but he played, and he threw four TD yeah. passes that game. Wentz does the same thing, and then, like we were talking off the air, I think that, that last pass that Jeffrey caught uh, right off the turf, I think it was intended for for Aguilar. It was right in front of him, and he just uh, he threw it off. But it was a lucky play, and he wound up getting his 33rd TD pass yeah, this season. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there going, wow, 33. He's got, you know, three more games to go. Uh, he's going yeah, to, like, he might hit 40, yeah. 40 TD passes. Well, and I, think it's a Phillip, I think Phillip Rivers tore his uh, ACL and played games after that. I mean, yeah. not just to finish the game, but played games I, uh, the after game, that. The game where uh, LaDainian La Tomlinson was on the sideline with his. Uh, yeah, you know, with his hood up and his and sitting on the bench. I yeah. think that came against yeah, he the did. Patriots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's amazing what some of these guys can do. And, and unfortunately, he's going to be lost for the whole season. And, and you know, it happens. Injuries happen, Neil. You certainly know more about it than, than we all do. But he was such a good guy and a team leader. And, and you know, I just hate to see I, I, That's as emotional as I got in a long time, seeing a guy go down and get hurt, was watching Wentz walk into that locker room. Yesterday. It was really a shame because such a magical year for, for him and the Eagles, you know. And, and it still can be, but it, it is a shame. And it's just amazing how things how quickly things change. And that's, that's why you appreciate so much when they go good. You know, it's amazing to do that for the whole year. Well, you know, it's amazing that they had number one and number two golf against a, a Wentz. And Wentz is like, no, I'm not going up against him. I'm going against the Rams. He's going against the Eagles. You know, he keeps all that in perspective. He's a humble guy. I, I think he single-handedly brought that team together. As, you know, I give Peterson a lot of credit. But Carson Wentz is a guy who really, uh, those guys all rallied around uh, and got them to the point where they There's are. There's no question yeah. about it. On the way in here, they had played the press conference where Wentz, was uh, was talking and i gotta be honest with you i actually got i got chills just you know some people can talk some people can just say things but when this guy talks you can feel the 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 uh sincerity of everything he's saying i mean you could listen to tim tebow talking about you know the kneeling down and praise the lord and all this stuff and, and no offense to tim tebow but when carson wentz says it you actually feel that it's so sincere that, you know what, you're, you're on that guy's side. You've yeah. got his back. Well, who was some of the leaders that you played with? Obviously, you were a leader on the defensive side. You called the signals and stuff. But, yeah. you know, you guys had certainly someone that at crunch time or you'd go to or he said something, guys were messing around or whatever. Who were some of the guys that you really looked up yeah, to? Yeah, lots of times it's the guys people don't uh, realize, too, like uh, Russ Grimm, you know, one of our hogs was kind of like the leader of our offense. You know, you think it'd be Theismann or Reagans or one of them, but it's more of the guys who are down in the dirt, you know, the grunting and uh, just they take charge and that's it. Uh, 
and I'll take it on defense. Yeah, well, you totally <laughs> did, and, and so there, but, but did, did you ever see a guy who was really in his only starting his second year? I mean, most guys are veterans when they get yeah. to that point. You know, you have you have Brian Dawkins, you had Reggie White, you had Trotter, those kind of guys uh, for the Eagles that I, that I can think of as far as being leaders of teams. Seth Joyner later on in his career. But for a guy who was starting his second season, to be that admired by all his guys and looked up to as the leader of the team, I think that's pretty special. It is amazing, and like I said, he's sincere. You know, the guys, the guys see that. You know, coaches can try to get leaders all they want, but the guys kind of naturally go to certain people, and he just happens to have it. And I tell you, the Eagles really hit a home run getting him. You know, I, I was wasn't really sure last year. You know, that out or talking good. And let's see, but. This year, he's, he's been amazing. Well, even in business, Joe, you're in business. You're in management, dude. You understand it. You know, there's people that are leaders that other people look up to. You know, you don't have to tell them what it's, to do all the time. Yeah, they take things true. to do on their own. Uh, you true. understand all that. You, know, you look at the character, his character. You look at it as, I guess, his upbringing. When these guys do that, um, that that test that they do at the combine, the I can, wonder I, the wonderlick test. Yeah. I can. I bet you aced that I, thing. <laughs> I don't think you had it. Back then. I, I, could care, I could care less about that test. What I what I want to do is I want to see eye contact. I want to see you know, when when I'm uh, interviewing someone, sure. eye contact, whether or not they get it or they don't get it. This kid gets it. He gets it from day one. He's got it. And you know what? You you said it. You said it, Neil. Guys know. They can sense. They put the radar up. That's that's nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Or they they go, hey, you know what? You receive it, and then you follow a guy like they that. They want to and follow a guy it. like that. Even a guy like Fletcher Cox. Like yeah. Even a guy like Fletcher yeah, Cox. Absolutely. And those guys jumped in Wentz's bandwagon. He didn't play well last year. But this year, yeah. he has played much better than he did. Now, Jernigan's and those guys, I think, have a little bit to do with it. Yeah. But, you know, it's funny, Joe. You know, I, I, I feel the same way, and I talk to people all over the place. And just think about all these people now. They're going online and putting their resumes, and they're getting interviewed for jobs <laughs> and positions online. How in the world can you hire or do anything? from somebody online, Joe. you you, you got to feel and see yeah, yeah. the eye test. Yeah. I mean, you sure. know what that's all about. Sure. I mean, there you are. You're, you're an undrafted free agent. You're in there, and you're ready to go, and they called you, and boom, bang, ready to go. And you never know how people are going to react to stressful situations. You know, it's great when things are going good. Yeah. And, you know, but yeah. when... when Stuff hits the fan, you know. Yeah. Certain people step up and others don't. All right. Well, you know, each week we do have uh, a segment on our show called The Game Ball. And uh, this week is certainly no different. And, uh, Joe, I, I don't know if you, you know, you're working a lot of hours now. Yeah, to get I, I even to, have an opportunity uh, to take my uh, well, that's all right. <laughs> it's okay. And I see them out of you. I see them out of you. I should have well, a white I'm going to send an invoice to your company you gotta, there for that free advertisement. Send me a text though. or something. <laughs> Come on now, takes Instagram, <laughs> tweet, yeah, well, I don't know how to do Pony it. Eagles. Yeah, Pony Eagles, yeah, Eagles, right, Pony Express. Man, do you have a game I ball? Do you have a game ball this week? <laughs> yeah, I do. Have All right, a game go ahead. Ball. Well, a game ball is brought to you by my, my guy, up? Paul, Paul Strauss at uh, the Styling Room, 943 North Adams Street, Pottstown. He's been with me from the get-go. He's there every year. I love the guy. He's still cutting my hair. I got to go see him before Christmas. But he does our game ball. Who do you got, partner? Oh, I'm actually going to give my a game ball to Chris, Chris Long. Of Chris Long, not only for everything he does for the community, his foundation for uh, for the, the schools in Virginia, and donating his paycheck, yeah, salary, you know, that, which is crazy in this day and age. That's crazy. But uh, the strip, the strip sack, yeah, the big play. Uh, and and that was a that was a giant play because that at uh, thirty, what was it, 30, uh, 35, 34, they were losing. You know, that's a big, that's a big play. Because yeah. you don't know what they're going to do, especially the way Gurley was running the ball. Yeah. How about you? Did anybody catch your eye yesterday? Carson Wentz. I'm going with Carson Wentz. Okay. You know, it was the big play. Uh, it yeah. hurt him, hurt him yeah. when he left, but yeah. uh, he, I thought he was going to get a couple more touchdowns. I did, too. If he didn't get hurt, he would Yeah, and I, I'm going to give mine to the tight ends. My son oh, calls yeah. me in a panic. Oh, my God, Dad, they don't have Zach Ertz. And I said, this is the second time they don't have Zach Ertz. I'm not the biggest Zach Ertz guy, as you well know, but I said, these guys will be all right. And Trey Burton and yeah, Brett Selly right. both stepped they were up. Amazing. You know, they caught three touchdown passes. They only had six catches, but they had three of them for touchdowns. They did their job. They made some big plays. I'm going to give mine to the Eagles' tight ends, Burton and Selly. Real quick, just a couple, a couple of points. 
they actually scrambled to get the headset in the Burton's helmet. Because Burton would have been the, the, the emergency the quarterback. quarterback uh, yeah. Because, and I didn't know this, Trey Burton went to Florida. He was a top-rated uh, high school quarterback. He went to University of Florida, and guess who beat him out for the starting quarterback position? At Tim the Tebow. Of Tim Deep. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Did not know yeah, that. Absolutely. Did not know that. Yeah. But, yeah, they hooked up the, the headset once it was. Well, you should have asked me. I would have told you. I, 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 I know all I that I got here stuff. late. I got here late, and I didn't have an opportunity. All right, well, listen, we got to take a quick timeout. We're going to get all the, uh, yeah, the votes all tallied up. We're going to announce our winner here. Uh, we're going to give one last call before we draw the, the Neil Okowitz jersey. We have a lot of fun here live at the Hooks in Boyertown, PA. The Vallejo's Done Insurance Monday Morning Quarterback Show. Stay tuned for more Monday Morning Quarterback right after this. At Vallejo's Done Insurance, we understand what moves people in business and in life and we use this knowledge to better serve our clients. And we bring the same work ethic and commitment to our business as our customers do theirs. Vlahos Dunn Insurance, providing quality coverage to the Tri-County area since 1994. So call our knowledgeable staff. Hi, I'm Jim Vlahos of Vlahos Dunn Insurance, and we're in your community. So you're officially married. Congrats. It's time to combine things. Your last names, your toothbrush holders, and your health insurance. When you combine policies, you can save and live happily ever after financially. Use the red key for more money-saving tips. Find yourself impulse buying uncontrollably. Here's a tip from Ben Franklin. Carry me in your wallet. Big bills are harder to give up. The next time you're tempted to impulse buy, you might not want to break a Benjamin. Use the red key and save. Back in 1949, Claude A. Reinhardt founded his family business, which has served the Pottstown and Tri-County area for over 50 years, specializing in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting, paper hanging, and brick restoration. Thanks to the commitment of tradition and values, Claude A. Reinhardt Painters has once again received this year's Reader's Choice Award. So if you're thinking about having an estimate or just need some good advice, give Ron or Keith Reinhardt a call and put your painting and decorating needs in our hands. The newly remodeled and renovated Creekside Sports Bar and Grill sits on the Landis Creek Golf Course. Featuring live entertainment and weekly specials, the Creekside offers something for everyone. Discounted beer and wing prices during all Eagles games brings a being at the game feeling. With tailgating, big screen TVs, and wearing your team colors, you can bring the fall spirit to Creekside. So stop by the Creekside Sports Bar and Grill and see all the fun things it has to offer. Hey, we're back here live at the Friendship Hook and Ladder Fire Company, better known as The Hooks in Boyertown, PA. The Vlahos Dunn Insurance Monday morning quarterback. We got my buddy Joe C. and my other buddy Neil Okowitz in the house. Now's the time we've been waiting for. We're going to announce the winner of our annual cook-off this year. It was homemade soup. Last year we had chili. Bill Gerhardt won the, uh, the chili last year. And this year, the winner of our annual cook-off is Rob Wilk, Crab and Shrimp Bisque. Rob Wilk. Come on over here, Ann. Sherry. We have the we have the apron. We got the apron. We got the shirt. Look, show, show everybody the shirt, Sherry, that we can have there. Rob, there you go. Oh, that's right. You better lose weight so it'll fit you. We got a couple of beer mugs behind you and a Mike's brick oven pizza. A certificate as well for winning the 2017 cook-off for the Monday morning quarterback show. Hey, Robbie. Hey, Robbie. 
I want to thank all the contestants, seven of them this year, which is an awesome turnout. You know who you all are. Thank you very much. Uh, I can't wait till the show's done so I can try a couple of them myself. I'm a big soup guy. Neil's not even a soup guy. Chicken noodle, that's about Chicken it. Chicken noodle, <laughs> out of the can. I can give you out of the can. Right the can. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, are you a soup guy? Hey, uh, my nickname at uh, the thrift play, they call me Soupy. Soupy. Yeah, they call you Soupy. <laughs> Soupy. All right, but listen, congratulations. Everybody did a great job with the soup cook-off. Thank you very, very much. I know it's a time-consuming thing, and I really do appreciate it here on the show. But again, congratulations to Rob Wilk for winning this year's soup cook-off. All right. You know, we do a by-the-numbers thing as well. Right. I have something Go today ahead. for by-the-numbers. Right, we have Jack Reesmer, who is my uh, financial advisor, accountant. He told me he might stop by tonight. I didn't see him. I, maybe he stopped by. But we do a thing called by the numbers uh, because of his accounting uh, deal. Yesterday, Big Ben threw over 500 yards for the third time in his career, the first quarterback ever in NFL history to throw for over 500 yards three times. It's the only guy who did it. Big Ben. You can't tell me Marino didn't nope, do it? Nope. Brees didn't do nope, it? No, he did it once. Okay. He did it once. Marino okay. did it once. That was Big Ben's third time of throwing for over 500. He threw 66 passes in a game. That's deal. amazing. It really is. 66. Yeah, you oh, had my Antonio God. Brown. You got to have a sore arm right there. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be throwing for 500 yards. Martavius Bennett and uh, Brown, Le'Veon Brown Bell. Brown what? 10 catches, 213 yards. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. 66 passes in a game. How about Woo. Pittsburgh Eagles in the Super Bowl? In Minnesota. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. That, that would be Perfect awesome. Weather. That would be awesome. All right. Well, each week we do have a question of the week, and you guys can listen out there as well. This is kind of an interesting one. Uh, it's our big Frank question. For those of you who aren't familiar with the show, uh, Frank Pichara was uh, our, our guy. He was uh, an awesome, awesome uh, uh, listener. He would call in each week and try to get it. We had pizza giveaways, and he always wanted to get that. Uh, his son, Big Z, has a clean-cut landscaping business, and he sponsors this to keep Big Frank's name alive. Unfortunately, Big Frank uh, passed away a few years ago, but he was awesome. When he, uh, we used to go there and watch Monday Night Football games in his house and have pizzas and a couple of beers, and he's just an awesome guy. All right, here is the Big Frank question of the week for you, Joe. My buddy here to the right, yes. one of the top 70 Redskins of all time, yes. wore number 52 for the Washington Redskins. Yes, he did. How many touchdowns did he score in his NFL career? Wow. That's How many touchdowns That's did Neil score in his NFL career? I'll give you a couple less minutes. Than to think. I'm not, less than five. Less than five. I'm not giving you any hints. No more, hints. I'm more than two. How's that? I'm going to say three. Neil. <laughs> zero, zero, one. He, did one. one. he had one. Tell him, Neil. Tell us about the one touchdown you had in the NFL. Gets the Chicago Bears intercepted a pass in front of Walter Payton. Scampered 15 yards for a touchdown. <laughs> scampered 15 yards. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember. He was a scamper. Oh yeah, he was a scamper. I'm not scamper scamping for five yards. <laughs> He scampered back in 1974 when the Trojans were running after him. I'll tell you that much. He used to scamper then. A 15-yard touchdown intercepted yes, right in front of Sweet and Well, yet. Peyton couldn't catch me either. Who threw the ball? He's going the other way. Who threw it? Do you know who threw it? Uh, was it Evans, Evans, was it? Uh, was that Evans, I think his name was. Okay, yeah. Evans. He wasn't a famous guy. Okay. Hey, he's famous now. Yeah, he, he, gave up your, uh, he gave up your, uh, your interception. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, right, where's Sherry? Sherry, let's pull another now. A couple numbers here. We got. Let's go. Let's do a beanie. We got a Labatt's beanie. Joe, take a couple. Take two out of there, Joe. Take two. Yeah. Here we go. Four oh three. Four oh three for the Labatt's hey. beanie. All right. Here we go. That's part of the hooks. The hook star team. The hook star team. Do we have another uh, gift certificate yet? Here we go. A Mike's Brick Oven Pizza gift certificate. Three, seven, nine. Three, seven, nine. Mike's Brick Oven Pizza. Three, seven, nine. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy won't. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, so that means everybody take back that dollar you were going to give him for his tip. He's not worth it. All right, and let's do a, let's do a flyer's glass. A flyer's glass. How about 393? 393 for a flyer's glass. Yeah. All right, here we go to galleries. Hook them up. We got to keep them and throw them in the back because we're going to give that jersey away. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hey, we do our five pack picks. We got to do that, and then we're going to give our jersey uh, this week. Uh, Izzy's on third, right across the street. Great spot. Paul Bauer and Kurt and Steve and all the guys. Uh, Izzy's on third is our sponsor for our five pack picks. Last week it was my son Christopher, Rick Pennypacker, and I. Christopher went four and uh, a four and one. Uh, I was three and two, and Penny Packer went two and three. That was beautiful. <laughs> As we honored him. Uh, you weren't there. You weren't there. I would have been yeah, yeah. five and up. Yeah, you would have been. <laughs> All right. Here we go, guy. Yeah, here we go. We got the Chargers and the Chiefs. Joseph, Chargers and Chargers Chiefs. Chargers and the Chiefs. I'll tell you what, the, the uh, Chargers are really playing well. Um, but I'm going to I'm going to take the Chiefs. All right. You're going to be the star. I'm going to play the Chiefs. Jar Joseph star. I like the Chiefs. Neil's going to beat it. Check. That, it seems every other week, Alex Smith Chargers has a good chips. game. Chargers. Woo! I like the Chargers. They're playing I'm good. going with. I, playing I love good. their uniforms. I'm going <laughs> Chargers as well. I think that's a Saturday night. We're getting all these Saturday yeah, night games right. now. Yep. Now the NFL's getting crazy. You're going to be on almost every day. <laughs> hey, I think the guy's coming back. Dawn, where's Dawn out there? Her guy might be coming back. And your wife's fantasy. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Oh, no. Green Bay at Carolina is the next game. 52, you're up. I'll go Carolina. You're going. You're going Carolina. Yeah, I'm going to go Carolina as well. Ooh, I'm going Pack. I'm going Pack on Pack that one. Pack. Aaron Rodgers is going to pull that one out. We got another big game. The Rams traveling up to Seattle for a big game in that NFC Western. Uh, Joe. I'm going to take Seattle. You're taking Seattle. I'm going to take Seattle. Woo! I think, the, I think uh, the, this game took a lot out of the Rams. Plus, they had a lot of injuries yesterday. Yeah. They had a lot of I injuries. I like the Rams. I, I don't like Seattle. <laughs> I don't like Seattle either. I'm going Rams. I'm going with you, Neil. There you go. We got the Pats and the Steelers, which is a big game for a number one seed in the AFC. The uh, pa Patriots are traveling to Pittsburgh. Neil. It should be a great game, but I go Patriots. You're going Patriots? Neil is the check. Joe? I'll tell you what, I'm going to, man, I was going to take the Patriots too, but I, I think I'm going to go Steelers. You're going to go Steelers? I think they're for real. And I'm going to do something real. I have never done before. Not pick the game? Not, <laughs> not pick the Patriots. Sorry, sorry. You're not going to take, pick the, you're gonna take the Steelers? I'm going to take the Steelers. Yeah, wow. I am. I'm going, yeah. I'm going with number 50, uh, Shea Believe yeah, and stuff, I mean, man. That's, they that's will be fired awesome up. Stuff, yeah. They will be fired up. It's, at, it's at Pittsburgh. And the last right. game is our EAGLESs. At New York Giants. Eagles. Okay, Neil. Is yeah, this. I mean everything's pointing yes. to the Eagles. Um, Giants. You gotta go Eagles. And you gotta go and, Eagles. And, and let, let's say this about Nick Foles. You know, Nick Foles, when he played here under Chip Kelly, he did throw 27 Sherry. touchdowns and only two ints, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the same guy. Yeah. He feels comfortable here. You, I heard him the other day talking about uh, how he wanted to come back here because he felt comfortable in the training facility with not just the, the team, uh, but the whole organization sure. made him feel comfortable. He cut his teeth and, and yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And you know what? I, I think we're going to be in good hands. Good Next man up mentality. Yeah. All right. Well, here it is. Here's the time we've been waiting for. We're going to take the, uh, the, the drawing for the jersey for the Neil Olkowitz autograph jersey. Did you sign it yet? Not yet. Not yet? Okay. Neil, we're going to let you pick this. Here we go, gang. Everybody get your tickets out. This is for number 52. Did you shake it up enough? I did. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get the bottom. I put all the ones back in, too, if you want a prize earlier, you were eligible. Here we go. Three, eight, two. Three, eight, two. Uh-oh. Three, eight, two. Yeah. All right. Three, eight, two. Bring your ticket up. We got to verify it here. <laughs> All right, you win. You win that jersey back there. And, uh, and if you want to sell it to Jimmy Mo, you can get like a hundred bucks. <laughs> at least get at least a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, at least a hundred. All right. And Neil will sign that Very for nice, you Neil. later on. <laughs>
Very nice. Well, the red, Redskins aren't having as good a year as you did, so I figured you're going to get 100 for that. <laughs> well, we go back to retro, though, exactly. you know. <laughs> but what do you think, Joe? Uh, you think, uh, can, we, obviously, we're in the playoffs. Right. Uh, do we have enough to go uh, uh, I think. I think so. I think we talked about it, um, you know, off the air. We talked to, oh, I, I talked about it. You know, you go back to, uh, you go back in time. You look at the uh, 72 Dolphins with, when Bob Greasy got hurt in week 12, Earl Morrill stepped in. He took him to the Super Bowl. Not only did he win, uh, get him to the Super Bowl, but he won the Super Bowl as well. And then you look at, uh, like, right, Frank Wright, when Jim Kelly went down. I don't know, you know, any correlation with that, but when uh, they were down, what, 35-3 to three to, uh, to Houston Oilers again, Warren yeah. Moon. Remember yeah. that playoff game? Oh, Wright yeah. came in. Wright took him into the Super Bowl. Yeah, Dallas beat the heck out of him, but you know, yeah. anything well, could happen. Yeah. Who, was, who was the greatest backup quarterback in the history of the NFL? Backup quarterback in the NFL. Who? From Owen J. Rock. No. Struck. Tommy yeah, Struck. Struck. Yeah. Tommy yeah. Struck, yeah. Hey, he yeah. had a great career, man. He was awesome. He had a great, a great career. The whole That's time. the best job in the world. He won one yeah. game a year. Yeah. That's what he used to get. He had a clipboard and visor. That's right. Yeah. He was a scratch copper. That's right. Oh, hey, listen, we got our money. How much do we have there, sir? Oh, my goodness. Hey, hey, we have everybody's attention for one yes. second. We got $140 that we're going to donate. Uh, I want to thank everybody who was a judge. Is Ronnie Peterson here? Uh, Okay, Jimmy Mack. Okay, Mack. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, for giving us this opportunity to do this, and, and it's a great thing that you do. And he's, this money's going to go towards some underprivileged families in Boyertown for Christmas to help make their Christmas a little bit nicer. Come on up, Mack. Very nice. Very nice. Good so job, we, Dave. Good job, Dave. I want to thank you and Ronnie Peterson and all the guys. Thanks, Appreciate that. Merry Christmas. Good job, man. All right. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. Merry Christmas. Right. Good, Good job. Go, go Interboro. Go Interboro. He's a Ridley guy. He's a Ridley guy. Oh, I, thought was, I thought it was Interboro, Mac. Oh, my bad. My it was all good. Bad. It was all good. Everything was so nice. And then you had to do that. All right, that was all good. I got to keep these guys on the Yeah, show. I can tell. Hey, I'll tell you what. I want to thank everybody for stopping out. We're, we're winding down here. Next week, we're going to be at Doc's Irish Pub for our annual Christmas show. We got Santa Claus. We got some special guests. We got Kim uh, from Vuja Day singing Christmas carols. She will stay on afterwards and sing for us as well. So a lot of good things happen. But I'm going to thank everybody out here. Give yourself a round of applause here at the Hooks tonight. And, and don't forget to tip your bartender, Christina. Um, <laughs> don't forget to tip her. All right. And I also want to thank Jen and Stacy and Ann and Barb and Sherry and everybody else. And you too, Molly. Uh, thank you guys for, for making this great. Don't forget Billy Carr. Thank you very much. The Crable Boys. Yeah. A to Z Furniture. Uh, reliable paper products, all the guys here at the at the Hooks, uh, the Gambler Boys, all the board people that help make this uh, night possible. We have a lot of fun, Alan and, and all the rest of the gang. Uh, I, I, I have a great time here. Uh, we'll be at the we'll be at the final uh, Planet Fitness tomorrow at nine o'clock with the workout boys over there having a good old time. Anybody want to join us? We'll get Neil in there to do some curls in front of mirror. I'm on the afternoon crew. Uh, you're on the afternoon crew. But anyway, guys, thanks again. We had a great time. Thanks to all the the people that made soup and everybody else that helped make this night a great great night. Thank you guys very very much. Thank you.